students good morning to all a very warm welcome to all students of class 11 i am your computer science teacher and my name is lakshmi narayanan i even handle computer applications for commerce group i congratulate you all you have completed your high school now you are stepping on your higher secondary you are going to spend 2 years in higher secondary education of course when you look at the subject computer science it's a new subject you are going to learn from higher secondary the subject is very easy you can learn things very quickly both computer science and computer application students will have some topics common the first five topics in both the sessions are same so we will start with the first lesson the first lesson topic name is introduction to computers of course the word computer stands for what c stands for commonly o stands for operated m stands for mission p stands for particularly u stands for used for the t stands for technical e stands for education and r stands for research right next of course we are using the modern electronic gadgets nowadays it may be your laptop or your advanced mobile phones before this electronic gadgets are developed in so many stages we should know where does it started from there's a person name called charles babbage when you pronounce this name most of the people might say this like this he is called the father of modern day computer so charles babbage is called father of modern day computer of course the device invented by charles babbage is analytical engine most of you think uh, the charles babbage has invented computer it's not like that he was called father of modern computer because the device what he developed uh, was a role model for developing computer right the analytical engine what he developed uh, in 1837 contains some basic units to work one is arithmetic logic unit basic flow control and integrated memory so the people who came after charles babbage were able to see his mission they have taken that mission as a role model to develop computer so because of that reason charles babbage is called as father of modern day computer so people have invented computer by seeing the model developed by charles babbage Am I clear? 
then a question is put that what is a computer then we can define computers in many ways one of the most uh, easiest way to define a computer is it is an electronic device that process the input according to the set of instructions provided to it and gives the desired output at very fast rate you all know it's one of the electronic device which can calculate more faster than human so whatever input is given to computer it is able to process that set of inputs very faster and gives the result very faster right then today computer has become a part of our life we can see computers everywhere around us in all spheres of life we can see computers in the field of education we can see computers being used in research purpose we can see computers being used in travel and tourism we can see computers are being used in weather forecasting we can see computers are being used in social networking and also computers are used in e-commerce they say as electronic commerce so it has become a part of our life right today no organization can function without a computer in fact various organization have become paperless this those days they are able to maintain the records on paper nowadays we are able to maintain the record on your modern electronic device called computer right computers have evolved over a years from a simple calculating device to a high speed portable computers see there are some several stages in the development of computers of course we are using the modern electronic gadget before your computers came into existence there are some ancient calculating devices for example abacus the first calculating device which was developed before 2500 bc then slide rule napier bones rotating wheel calculator Herman Hollerith tabulating machine. These are some of your ancient calculating devices. All these devices are as a role model for this new modern electronic gadget called computer. It does not mean we produce computer directly. So it has gone. The calculating devices has gone several stages. because of the development of several stages now we have obtained your computer their modern electronic gadget right so the growth of computer industry started with the need of performing fast calculation manual methods of computing was slow and prone to errors can a man work faster than computer not possible in calculation machines are more faster than men this is the reason why most of our organizations are computerized it does not mean man cannot do calculation he can perform calculation but compared to him computers can perform calculation more faster clear then generations of computers actually what is the mean of a generation here it refers to major development in electronic data 
process. Major development in electronic processing. So based on various stages of development, computers are categorized into different generations. So they have categorized into totally six generations in your book. First generation, during this period of time, the computers were developed. They are called as first generation computers. Computers which are developed from the year 1942 to 1955. During this time of period, the computers which are developed are called as first generation computers. Right? So they say the computers which are developed from the year 1942 to 1955 are called as your first generation computers. Of course, what was the component used inside a computer? It was called as vacuum tubes. Nowadays, uh, people might be very familiar about the word uh, motherboard, hard disk, compact disk, RAM, processor. But when they developed first generation of computers, Inside that computer, there was only one component present to do all the process. They are called as vacuum tubes. This was the component used in first generation of computers, developed from the year 1942 to 1955. What are the merits and demerits of your first generation? Merits, we can say as advantages. Demerits we can say as disadvantages. Merits. There is no merit in first generation. There are a lot of demerits. Number one, big in size. Computers were able to occupy the entire room. So they say big in size. Nowadays we are able to place our computer on desk or we can place our computer on your lap. Nowadays, we have even palm PCs. Of course, we can place a PC on the palm and work. In those days, when they developed a first generation computers, it was very big in size. Number two, consumed more power. It requires more electricity to function. First generation computers were able to perform malfunction, doing wrong processing. Why they are doing wrong processing? Because due to overheat, this first generation computers were not able to do their process correctly. They are not able to function properly. What was the language used in first generation? Mission level language. Of course, we have three types of languages. We call as mission level language, middle level language, high level language. What type of language was used in first generation? They used mission level language. Right? Only Mission can understand. Mission level language is made up of zeros and ones. What are the different types of computers developed in first generation? ENIAC, EDVAC, UNIVAC. These are the types of computers which are developed during first generation. Of course, uh, you are able to see a picture right now. This is your ENIAC computer. The size of the computer, or it is weighing about 27 tons, 8 feet, 8 feet into 100, into 3 feet, consumed around 
150 watts of power. So this is your old type of computer which was developed in the year 1940 to 1955. That is your ENIAC. Okay. From second, from first generation, we move on to second generation. Why people have moved to second generation? Because there are a lot of demerits in first generation. So it was a failure model. Computers were just a, a failure model in your first generation. So people started to develop second generation of computers. The second generation of computers started from the year 1955 to 1964. During this time, the computers which are developed are called as your second generation computers. In first generation, they have been using a component name called vacuum tube. That vacuum tube is being replaced by transistors. Okay. Now there are some merits in second generation. Number one, what's the merit advantage in second generation? Smaller compared to first generation. So computer size was reduced because they started using transistors. These transistors are able to produce less heat. Then your vacuum tubes are able to occupy more power, whereas your transistors consumed less power than vacuum tubes. Punched cards were used in second generation. First operating system was developed. Okay. And batch processing and multi-programming operating system mission language was developed during second generation and the second generation started using a language called assembly language if you take your first generation it was using your mission level language now we started using another language called assembly level language when you go to your second generation and these are the examples of your second generation of computers IBM 1401, IBM 1620, UNIVAC 1108. These are the types of computers which are being developed during second generation. Right? This is your IBM 401 and this is your UNIVAC 1108. One of your second generation computers. Third generation computers, both your first generation and your second generation computers was a failure model. Now people started developing computers in the next stage, they are called as a third generation. The third generation started from the year 1964 to 1975. What was the component used in third generation? Integrated circuits. They shortly call us IC. This is your IC. So by using IC, what is an advantage? Computers were smaller, faster and more reliable. They're able to function very faster. They are very smaller more reliable we can trust that computer is able to do the process correctly compared to your vacuum tube and transistor third generation used ic's which consumed less power both your first generation and second generation used languages like this first generation used mission level language second generation used assembly level language Third generation used high level language. During this time, there are some computers invented. They are called as third generation computers. 
IBM 360, Honeywell 6000 series. They are called as your third generation computers. This is your IBM 360 and this is your Honeywell 6000 series computers, which has developed in third generation. Now, third generation was a successful one. Now, people started developing the computers to the next stage. They are called as your fourth generation. Fourth generation started in the year 1975 to 1980. What was the component used in fourth generation? Microprocessor. Microprocessor was the component used in fourth generation. And they say VLSI. Very large scale integrated circuits. So, in order to reduce the size of the computer as much as possible, they started using microprocessor. Right? Micro computer series such as IBM and Apple were developed during fourth generation. Computers has become portable computers. Portable means we can carry our computer from one place to another place. Right? Examples of your fourth generation desktop computers. The computers what we use in your home are your fourth generation computers. Now we'll move on to fifth generation. Fifth generation is from 1980 and they say still we are moving in fifth generation that is till date. What was the component used for developing a fifth generation? Ultra large scale integration. Right? In your fourth, we have been using your VLSI. Very large scale integrated circuits. What does the circuit contain? ICs. Integrated circuits. Okay, wa? now in fifth generation, they use ultra large scale integration circuits. What was the advantage of a fifth generation? Computers are able to do parallel processing. Simultaneously, it can do one or more process. Superconductors were used. Computer size was drastically reduced. And computers were able to recognize images and graphics. And one more major advantage of your fifth generation is we used artificial intelligence of course human contain natural intelligence what is natural intelligence a human can think and answer by himself whereas a mission cannot think by itself and it cannot answer by itself we have to program that if a system is able to answer anything by its own we can call that intelligence as artificial intelligence and is able to solve high complex problems including decision making and logical reasoning so when they introduced fifth generation more or less they want to develop a computer which can play a role equal to a human right Sixth generation, still in progress, they say in future. What are the merits? Like your fifth generation, it can also perform parallel and distributed computing. Then, number two, sixth generation computers, computers has become smaller, faster and smarter. Sixth generation was able to use robotics. Sixth generation was able to use NLP, natural language processing. Normally, human, we use some language for our transformation of inf information from one human to other human. 
can a system understand our natural language and do the process yes it is possible they say in six generation it is still in process so only there in future development of voice recognition software can a system recognize the human commands and work that is called development of voice recognition software right that's all for today's video session please go through this video session once or twice so you can understand the points what i say we'll meet in the next video session thank you for observing this session